Welcome to First Wednesday, everybody. Come on, hop up to your feet. We're so excited to worship with you tonight. Are you guys ready to give God praise in this place? Oh, come on, I said, are you ready to give God praise? Put your hands up, put that.
promises that fade are never enough. your voices and sing with me. Oh, there's nothing. Come on. Better than you. There's nothing. Better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, you will always satisfy, Lord. Say this. Say, I'm Come on, say, you turn crazy to God. Yeah. 
need some room here. Hey, I got a habit. My habit is every day I go to the park and I take a walk in the afternoon and I talk to Jesus. That's my habit. I do it every day. I go talk to Jesus because he makes me show up there. And if you live in Florida, you know it's a little bit of a dicey game to go walk in in the park in the afternoon because what's going to happen in the afternoon in Florida? It's going to rain on you. I got out of the truck yesterday and I started my walk. I started my walk and the black clouds started to fill the air and the thunder was in the distance and I, I heard on the inside of me the Spirit of God say, hey, when was the last time you just looked at me and said, wow. I said, I don't remember the last time, God, but I'll do it right now. God, thank you for this thunder. Thank you for the lightning. Thank you that you're, you're showing your power in the sky. And most of all, Lord, thank you that I'm going to be dry when I get back to my truck. Well, I got to the furthest point in my walk, which is the furthest point from my truck. And I felt the Spirit of God say something else on the inside of me. He said, louder! And then it started raining buckets on my head. So my truck stinks today. And I went, I took a 20 minute unsolicited shower so that this room could say, wow, loud today. Will you say, wow, loud for my king today? It's all you can. Oh, sing that chorus. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, I've never seen it, Lord. I've looked everywhere. Oh, there's nothing. those graves into gardens. Come on, let's sing it out. Oh, you turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into water. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. Oh, you turn graves into gardens. can do the impossible things. Come on. Thank you, Lord. You know, it's that same God that turns graves into gardens that rose Jesus from the dead. And it's that same spirit, the Holy Spirit of God that was resting upon the water in Genesis before the world was even formed. That same spirit is in this room tonight. He's the Holy Spirit, and I believe, we believe, that he wants to do something powerful and new, that he wants to meet us right where we are. He's going to show up in our situations. So right now, where you're at, we want to invite him in. Would you lift one or both of your hands, whether you're online or in the room? Holy Spirit, God, we invite you in this place. God, would you come rest upon your people? Would you come speak, Lord? We're listening. God, would you show up like only you can? God, we want you to have your way in this room, in our lives, in our situations. The things that seem impossible, Lord, we know that nothing is too hard for you. So God, we invite you into this place tonight. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for your spirit, Lord. Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Come. Rest. 
rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Oh, calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here. Let your voice with me as we sing. 
by your voice through your word. Lord, we come expecting with an open heart and an open mind for you to move, for you to speak, for you to change, for you to transform in Jesus' name. Lord, we come not afraid but confident in your presence, humble, waiting to be led and spoken to as a good father speaks to his children. Lord, let us continue to hear from you in your house to be guided by your ways. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good to see you guys. First Wednesday. You guys can be seated for just a moment. Hey, listen, I want to, uh, how's everybody doing? Good? You doing good? I'd love to hear Pastor Jay play, don't you? Don't you? Play a little bit. Just keep playing. I want to share. Um, so the last three weeks for me, I've been kind of battling with uh, some thoughts. So at the sake of maybe being too transparent, but I know you can handle it. A familia, right? We're family, right? So you can handle it. If not, there's plenty of room in other churches. You know. Um, I, got a little, I got a little too caught up um, in watching what was happening to the left and right of me. Got, got a little too caught up in the tragedy of children being shot dead in elementary schools. of continued hatred and bigotry and racism because of the color of people's skin or their family of origin or where they were born. Got a little too, got a little too caught up. And what I mean by that is I found myself gravitating towards, uh, I, I actually was completely fascinated by the unbelievable, ridiculous, ungodly behavior of, of Johnny Depp in the wedding, like well, what, in the marriage, like what, what is going on? How people are this sick? Like, and I felt, I felt a gravitational pull towards it. And so I was praying one day, noticing that I was like, man, wow, I'm, I'm kind of spending some time reading the news. I always like to check in because 
I like to stay current, but not current enough where it, it blurs what God is doing in our lives or in our culture. But I found myself a little gravitating towards it a little too much. And so when I started to notice that, I started to pray. I said, Lord, what, what is that in me? Remove it from me. This Maybe this appetite that has developed. This, this kind of gravitational pull. And he brought me back to a scripture. And he absolutely... Um, miraculously wiped my brain clean. He took away this draw, this pull, if you will. And he brought me back to a, a story. And he said specifically, how do you want to live? Do you want to live blessed? Or do you want to live corrupted? And I got so convicted. I put a lot more uh, uh, stock, if you will, or value in being the best husband and the best father. I put a lot of value, more value in being the best husband and best father than I do being the best pastor. What I find is when I concentrate on what Lord, the Lord has given me, he accelerates my gifts and we have more godly influence than actually the things that I want in life. My pastor always says this to me, take care of your own field. Make sure you plow your own field. Make sure you tend your own garden. Because out of that flourishes the rest of your life. And ironically, what happened is he, the, the Lord took me to this scripture, and I want to share it with you. And I just started digging in to this one scripture, because I think if we're honest, sometimes not because we're bad people, but there is a spiritual enemy who wants to take us away from who God created us to be and what God has called us to do. He's always on the prowl. He's always on the move. He's always active. So when we're dormant, he continues to take ground. I just started looking through this scripture in the history and why this promise to God's people. It's in the Old Testament and it's God, Old Testament. Jesus has not been born yet. It's God, Yahweh in the Old Testament. The context for the scripture is that the people of God have moved away from God and started to put confidence and trust, preoccupation in what their surroundings were doing and the strength of their surroundings. God speaks to the prophet and he says, I'm going to pull my presence from these people because they have turned their back on me. And I will deliver them to the things that they desire. And because they are my children, I will wait for them. And I think if we're honest, a lot of times that's us. We kind of wander a little bit and we kind of get preoccupied. We start to put trust over here and trust in that person, trust in this system, trust in, and we find ourselves being pulled away. And God is grieved because he's a good father. God is, is his heart breaks. And what I love about the scripture is he just says, and I'll, I'll be there waiting. I'll be there waiting for when they come back. And then he tells the prophet this. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord 
and whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. Trust and hope. And he will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. And I felt like God say to me inside, just like, I want you to live blessed. I want you to live blessed. And I know that in circles we hear that in Christian circles and blessed means I drive a Maserati now and blessed means I make a lot of money and blessed means I live in the biggest house and blessed means. But the biblical meaning of blessed is more than happy. I want you to live fulfilled. But you have to be like this tree. But you have to be like this tree. Trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. Here we go. You ready? Lean in. Trusts in the Lord whose hope is in. The tree that flourishes is the tree, is the we, is the us who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. Here's what's interesting. The word trust in the original language, bata, means to throw one down upon his face and lie extended on the ground. That's trust. The biblical meaning of trust is to lay face down on the ground. What I love about the picture is face down on the ground. You don't see the things that are happening around you. You trust so much that even though you don't see it, God still got it. Trust. That's the trust that the blessed man has. Trust. I'm just laying. I'm just, I can't, I'm not, my face, my face is to the, the key thing is the face is to the ground. I don't even have to see what's happening. God has got it. Trust in the Lord, ready? And the word hope is mimpta. What it really means is confidence. It's a confidence. In some translations, it will actually say confidence. It's one who is blessed is the one who trusts where they just lay themselves down in front of God with their face to the ground. And I know you see it. I know you got it. I know you're doing it even though I can't see it. But I trust so much I don't have to see it. And the one who hopes is the confidence in who he is. My hope is not in culture. My hope is not in a political party. My hope is not in a cure for a pandemic. My hope is in the confidence of who God is. So all of a sudden, it's this trust and this hope. I sometimes struggle trusting at that level and hoping in that level with my future and with my kids, if I'm being transparent. Because I look at the shootings and I look at the depravity of man and I look at where culture is going. Golly, Lord, where are you? No, no, no. Trust. Not, listen, Trust. Trust. And what's your confidence in with your future? And for me, with my kids, I can see them sometimes doing things that I go, oh, 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 oh. Ooh, let me speak into that. Let me say something. I got to tell you something. I got to share something with you. I got to. Let me tell you when I was 21. Let me tell you what happened when I was 24. Let me tell you. That's not your face to the ground. That's laying before the Lord with your head up doing this. Yeah. There's confidence in who I am. 
Confidence in hope. The confidence in who he is. The hope of who he is. Trust. Just right before you. Completely vulnerable. Think of the definition. Complete vulnerability. And then there's this hope. There's this confidence, not in my education, not in my experience, not in my know-how, not in my leadership, not in my Bible acumen, but the confidence that as much as I know is still foolishness to God Almighty. All right. Here we go. For the person who trusts and has his confidence in who he is, he shall be like a tree planted Keyword by the waters, not in the water, not surrounded by water, but by the waters. Listen, wherever you're watching from online or where you are in this house tonight, the Holy Spirit's talking to you about your next steps. Look at the scripture. Because the one who trusts and has hope, he shall be like a tree planted by the waters by the waters, which spreads out its roots, by the waters. The water is no good, but the tree has to move towards. The roots have to move towards the water to get the benefit of the supplier. The roots have to move towards the water to the thing that sustains the tree. If you just sit by and look at the water, you wither and die. But the tree, his roots are by the water, but the scripture says, which spreads out, you gotta make a move. You gotta make a move towards the source. You have to make a move towards that which sustains you, which nourishes you, which builds you up, which grows you. The one who trusts and hopes. Trust, complete vulnerability and trust. The one whose confidence, hope, mipta, whose confidence is in the Lord. Well, you're a tree that is by the source, but its roots spread out. It makes a movement towards the river and will not fear when heat comes. When I'm moving towards the source, my emotion is not fear. No matter what I see in culture, no matter what I watch, no matter the depravity of man, when I'm moving towards the source that feeds me and sustains me, my emotion is not fear. Because in the biblical economy, in the Hebrew mind, in the Christian heart, what I move towards either gives me hope or gives me fear. It's, man, you're like a tree. The one who hopes, the one who hopes, the one who trusts, he's like a tree by the water. You gotta move towards the source. And when you start moving towards the source and get nourished by the right source, you don't fear. Right. But its leaf will be green. You see, what the scripture says is when I move towards the river, I will not fear when what? When trouble comes. When hard times come, when things are happening I can't figure out, when things are happening I don't understand, when things are happening I can't compute in my brain, when things are happening around me I don't become fearful, when I reach obstacles, when I don't have answers, when everything is a valley and not the mountaintop, the reality is I will not fear because I'm moving towards the source because I trust in God and I'm confident in who he is. Right, spreads out. You gotta move towards the source. And will not fear when trouble, ah, when heat, the thing that drains you, the thing that wears you out, the thought that plagues your mind, that zaps your energy or your focus. When that comes, I'm not gonna fear. When those things are around me, I'm not going to fear. When I don't understand how a man, a young man can take a young life. The 
But when the troubles are around, the heat, the obstacles, the depravity, I won't fear. Because I trust and I have hope. And I'm like this tree who I move towards the source. Then the scripture says, but its leaf will be green. Because what is affecting culture and all around, listen, what's affecting culture and all around will not affect me. Not because God doesn't love everyone, but because I'm moving towards the source and not towards the negativity and fearful and sin. Right, its leaf will be green. I will flourish. While everyone is affected by the heat, by the circumstances, whether it's an attitude or a mindset or a behavior, while all the others are affected by that, I, because I move towards the right source, the source, I make a movement towards God. I don't fear and I ain't affected like everybody else. My leaves are green. Yeah. And we'll not be anxious in the year of drought. We'll not be anxious. Because listen, troubles are coming. Hard times are coming. There's a valley in your future. Thank you for being so positive, Pastor Q. But no matter how deep or wide the valley, the drought, I don't fear. I'm in the source and I'm not anxious. Let me tell you what God said to me. When we're in trouble, get me out, God. Take this from me. This is horrible. He's not the man I married. She's not the woman I saw in the mall with a crop top and short shorts. She's not the same woman. Jesus, take the wheel. It's a drought. It's, a, it's not anxious. Lord, this hard time, this negativity, these arguments, these shootings, this racism, this bigotry, the economy, the gas prices, whatever it is, don't be anxious. We're not anxious to get out. And will not be anxious in the year of drought. It's because when you're planted in the source, in the river, Jehovah Jireh, he's my provider. Listen, Jehovah, but what what God was saying to me is, don't be so anxious to get out. Be more anxious to learn about the season you're in. Be more anxious to learn what you need to learn in the difficulty so when it comes back again, you can say, I killed the lion and the bear. I can kill this giant. Right. We we have a tendency, when times get tough, get me out. Get me out. I got to move on. I got to go. And God's going, if you're planted and your trust and your hope is in the right place, you a tree that doesn't wither in the heat, it flourishes, your leaves are green. Don't be so anxious to get out of hard times. Ask me what you're supposed to learn here so you don't have to go through it again. Why? It's, It's the beginning of the story. 40 years, the Jewish people in the desert on a journey that should have taken two months, 40 years, because they could not learn who their source was. No, you won't be anxious in the year, in the times, in the difficult times. Don't rejoice in the difficult times like some weirdo. But the Bible says rejoice when you're being tested because it assumes in our Christian mind that we're asking God, what do you want me to learn? What are you showing me? And all of a sudden the hill, the valley becomes a mountaintop because I'm better for it. See, and we won't be anxious in the year of drought, nor will, nor will cease from yielding fruit. 
The one who does not move, listen to me, the one who does not move towards the source, like a tree with roots, in hard times and in the heat, the drought, the difficulties, the confusion, what happens is they wither and die. But the one who moves towards the source, regardless of the circumstance around, flourishes. We won't stop taking ground. We won't stop hearing from God. We won't stop being guided by the Holy Spirit. We won't stop. Regardless of what the drought and the circumstances and the heat. We won't cease from yielding fruit. We won't cease from yielding fruit. And the Lord showed me something. You know, if, if you don't know this, if you're new to the chapel, haven't been here in a while, you know um, we decided to build a building, expand because we were doing so many services in our location. I was gaining a lot of weight. I have no cardio left. Let's just build a building. So it's not, that's not true. Who buys a shopping center and expands in a pandemic? Who does that? Who does that? God does. We just get to be the example. See, you won't cease from yielding fruit. I'll drop something on your first Wednesday because you're family. If you're a first time guest, guess what? Whether you want to be or not, you're family. Yeah. We're going to expand again. And we're going to create the first iteration of our leadership academy and counseling space. I'm just telling you. Why? Because you'll hear about more of that in the next three months. But I'm telling you. Why? Because we will not cease from yielding fruit. Because we move towards God in the drought and in the heat. And regardless of how culture affects everyone else, it doesn't affect us, our mind and our heart. Because we move towards the source. Right. Listen. We can be confident in approaching God. Knowing that he listens to us. Whenever we ask him for anything according to his will. And since we know that he hears us, when we make our requests, then we can be sure that he will answer us. The thing that changed my mind and my heart in this little funk that I was in was prayer. I just, Lord, I, Lord, what? Lord, help me, why am I? I'm kind of thinking about like, a lot of what I'm trying to think about, thinking about this and that, and it was prayer. And what I have found is that prayer moves me towards God and away from circumstances. Prayer moves me towards the source. Prayer move, listen. Prayer moves me towards the river. Prayer moves me. See movement where you move towards begins to shape our attitudes, mold our hearts, and guide our minds. What we, move, it's word, it's word. See, it's trust and hope. Trust that he's got it. That's why they call it faith. Trust that he's got it, because I don't know really, because my face is to the ground and I'm completely vulnerable. And my confidence, my trust is that he has it and my confidence is in who he is. The one who created the universe, the one who held the stars in his hands, set the planets in motion, I don't know that he's worried or concerned or shocked by the current events of our culture. It grieves his heart, but I'm thinking the one who set the stars and planets in place, I'm thinking he's got it. And when I come to him in prayer, Lord, help me. Lord, I want to put, my tr I want to put more trust in you, and I want to put more confidence in you than anyone, than anything, or even myself. I don't know if the one who hung on the cross 
and conquered death, would ever look at any of us and go, that's a little too much for me right now. Won't you hold on to that? Won't you hold on to that anxiety? Won't you hold on to that depression? Won't you hold on to that fear? Won't you hold on to that lack of confidence? That's not my God. It was prayer. It was prayer knowing that we confidently approach God, knowing that he does listen. This is word. Knowing that he does listen, we ask him for anything according to his will. Why is it his will? It's because I'm laid out before him with my face to the ground. That's trust. His will. And since we know that he hears us, trust, faith, when we make our requests, then we can be sure that, well, he's going to answer because my confidence is in him. My confidence is in who he is. And even, even though I don't see it, and a lot of times I don't feel it, my confidence is in who he is, the maker of all things, the creator of all things, the giver of all things. So if it doesn't happen by Thursday, then I just might start to think that he knows when it should happen, how it should happen, and that's the best. It's because... It's because prayer moves. Prayer, prayer, prayer for me turns me into a tree <laughs> that moves towards the river. Here's what we're going to do for just a little bit. Stay with me, guys. Thank you so much. If, the, if our prayer team could come forward, some of our pastors, let's just make a little time up here right, right in the front. I missed, I missed this so much during the, the evil days of COVID. We just need to be, we just need our, our prayer team and our pastors. Let me tell you what they're gonna pray. They're gonna pray when you come up for prayer, they're gonna just pray for you. They're gonna get your name and they're gonna go, Lord, give them the strength to trust more and a deeper confidence in who you are. We're gonna pray for more trust and more confidence. Trust that you got it. We're going to pray that, Lord, you have this situation that my brother and my sister is going through. And our confidence is in the maker of all things, the creator of all things, the master of the universe. That's where my hope is. Because when we trust and we hope, we're like a tree that's not affected by culture, the drought, the heat. We are a tree that flourishes when everything else withers and dies and dries up. We are a tree that continues to grow grow and continues to flourish. That is the promise of God, your father, my father. So just for a little bit, and let me tell you something I learned a while back. I learned how to write my prayers. A mentor of mine taught me this. As a matter of fact, he's taught it to our staff. That when I write things down, the thoughts of my mind become detangled when they go through my fingers. Write down your prayer on one of those white cards. Drop it in one of the boxes as you leave. So our prayer team can pray over them all week long. Just take a minute. Lord, where am I? Where do I need to be more confident in you? Lord, I pray that I have your confidence with my kids. My hope for my kids is in you. Lord, teach me to trust you with my marriage, with my employment, with my relationships, with my doubt, with my confusion. Write it down. Our thoughts become detangled when they go through our fingers. And then for some of us, we just need to come up and have the prayer team and our pastoral staff pray over you. Well, we're going to trust you more. We're going to learn how to lay face down. Laid out, face down, trusting you. And my confidence is not in what I have, who I am, what I own, what I know. My confidence is in the God Almighty. Let our team pray for you. Let our pastors pray for you. And then we're going to, I'm going to come back and 
we're going to pray together. Our worship team is going to lead us in some prayer, and then we're going to worship again. You ain't going nowhere. What else are you going to do? Come on. Come up front. Come on. Come up for prayer.
Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and trust you with the outcome. Lord, your word says that when we draw near to you, you draw near to us. So Lord, we believe in that promise. Lord, we thank you for the miracles that are in motion in this place tonight, God. The healings. God, the confidence that we have in you. God, the restoration that's taking place. Lord, we thank you. God, we thank you for it all, Lord, and we trust you. We draw near to you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Church, we're going to continue to worship tonight, giving God all the praise, all the thanks, declaring the authority that he has in our life and all that he's going to continue to do as we leave this place. Would you lift your voice with me tonight as we sing? Creation knows the voice that's spoken to the void. The bread that brought the dust to life and sang the stars to form. The darkness fears your voice. I drove it back before And though the night is long I know your light Will drive it back once more One word from you Things change on your
what have I to fear? And I will not deny Him the glory that is His. Will heaven not prevail? And strongholds not be moved? Will spirits not be silenced? And cower at His rule? For if my God is for me, then what have I to fear? And I will not